What's cracking, fam? T-Money down in the dungeon. Down and dirty in the dungeon. Wednesday night, uh, late. It's like midnight. I got a ton of stuff in the mail over the last week. Um, it's been about a week since I've done an update, so I've done an update. So, um, just got back from the old Dunkaroo. Got a little coffee so I could stay jazzed for this video. Um, but it's late and it's a work night, so I'm gonna get rolling. So. Let's start this video off juicy and fun. We have a movie by the name of Repenetrator. This is a porno, and I'm really excited to check it out because it's a reanimator porno. Um, basically, you've got a dude who reanimates this woman, and um, I don't know if she's like a sex slave or what, but it sounded very kinky. I can't turn it over because there is definitely... Okay, so when I ordered this, I got this from Diabolic DVD, I wasn't sure that it was an actual porno uh, or just like some sort of softcore horror parody type thing, but no, it's an actual porno, um, so that's uh, <laughs> kind of cool, kind of interesting, kind of kinky, kind of dirty, but uh, yeah, there's some bloody, disgusting um, uh, headshots um, on the back of this, so... Uh, Repenetrator, Burning Angel. I guess she's a porn star, I'm not sure, but she's the star. So, we'll see when the mood is right and the time is late and the lights go down. Um, and I'm in my man cave. Everywhere is pretty much a man cave down here. We'll throw this on. Gotta say, I'm a big fan of the XX Exorcist, the Sexorcist porno. That's pretty badass. Um, I'm a fucking psycho, so what can I say? All right. Let's get into the DVDs. There's just a couple of them. First up, Kino Lorber, uh, Storm of the Century. Not sure why they didn't release this on Blu-ray, but I figure I might as well grab a copy of it. I don't own the film on any other format. There's two discs in this, um, in this thing, so it doesn't really specify, though. Uh, I guess maybe one disc is a special features disc, and one is... Well, let's, let's see. I don't know. But I did see that it was two discs so you've got parts okay so it's such a long film that it's in three parts so you've got storm of the century parts one and two and then part three so uh yeah had to grab it love kino lorber um and i have i've heard good things about this but i i don't know if i've ever seen storm of the century to be perfectly honest but that wouldn't surprise anybody would it antrim this sounded pretty badass uh, the deadliest film ever made, shot on video, or not shot on video, but uh, like uh, Blair Witch Project style, I guess, shot on. Uh, rumored to have been lost, Antrim appears as a cursed film from the 1970s. Viewers are warned to proceed with caution. It's said to be a story about a young boy and girl who enter the forest to save the soul of their recently deceased pet. Their journey to the Antrim, they journey to the Antrim, the very spot the devil landed after being cast out of heaven. There, the children begin to dig a hole to hell. It says, Antrim is both a spooky viewing experience and a profound meditation of the power of cinema to inspire and disturb. Unnerving. Downright creepy. So, maybe I'm wrong about it being a um, found footage film, but um, I don't know. It sounded good, though. It sounded really creepy to me. Um, like a, like a, a creepy pet cemetery type movie. So, that's awesome. Stoked for that. All right, let's get into the single disc releases now. I got a bunch of Kino here. We have Winter Kills. Um, don't really know much about it, but the cast kicks ass in this. Uh, Jeff Bridges, John Huston, Anthony Perkins, uh, Thomas Milan, just uh, Richard Boone, just awesome. Um, and it's new uh, 4K Master of the Film. Jeff Bridges stars as Nick Keegan, the son of a world-famous tycoon and half-brother of the late U.S. President Timothy Keegan, who was slain by a lone assassin, a lone assassin 19 years earlier. But when a long-rumored second gunman, gunman makes a secret deathbed confession, Nick begins to unravel the trail of suspects that includes a billionaire war freak. So, cool. Sounds good. A little thriller suspense action there. Then we have She, which is kind of like a cheesy uh, mid-80s um, futuristic like war-torn post-apocalyptic city and this chick is just badass and she reigns supreme and uh, takes out all the bad guys I don't know that sort of thing but it's like a kind of like a post-apocalyptic cheesy 80s action flick with maybe some weird barbaric um, 
wardrobe. I don't know. Sounds pretty cool, though. The characters in it remind me of, like, um, the punks from, uh, I forget what movie is it. Uh, I don't know. Just cool looking, like, punk characters in it. So, um, that's awesome. Then we have another one from Kino, The Magic Sword. Never seen this. 1962. Mythical monsters and noble knights come to life in this enchanting fantasy adventure from Bert 1. <laughs> Bert the first, maybe? Bert I? Bert L. Gordon. <laughs> Legendary director of cult classics The Cyclops, The Amazing Colossal Man, Earth vs. the Spider, uh, Picture Mommy Dead, and Empire of the Ants. When the evil sorcerer Ladolk kidnaps the beautiful princess Helen, Helen and threatens to turn her into dragon food, the brave Sir George makes it a mission to rescue her. I can't read over everything I have. If I do, we'll be here all fucking night. So I'm not going to do that, but... Sounds good. 1962. I love, like, mythical, magical... Knights and shining armor and magic swords and magic stones and all that kind of good goodness. Um, castles and dragons and all that goodness. Uh, anyways, Farewell Friend, a film by John Herman. Um, Charles Bronson, can't be bad. I mean, it's probably some good detective whodunit. City streets action suspense thriller. Don't really know, but it's from 1968, so that's awesome. All right, now we will get into... Um, <clears throat> So, somebody had posted about this on social media. Uh, MFA, I never saw this movie. It's Rebecca Eastwood, or Francesca Eastwood. She stars in it, Clint Eastwood's daughter. Um, but it's supposedly a pretty good, like, revenge flick that came out a couple years ago. So I wanted to grab it. It's a cheap double feature, Sinister Cinema. I got this for, like, 10 bucks or 12 bucks maybe. Uh, shipped from Amazon or eBay, one of the two. Uh, but it's, yeah, it's a double feature, so that's awesome. Um... One of them has to do with a serial killer, and the other one has to do with a, um, it's like a rape revenge movie, so that's cool, awesome. Then we have one I got from Grindhouse Video, uh, American Holocaust. I've never seen this movie before, I know it's like super low budget, like a gore fest, indie, like psycho, low budget, shot on video type shit, I think, um, but I had to pick it up, it's limited Blu-ray, uh, Signed up, and yeah, according to Mike, it was like super limited, so I figured why not. I had the DVD a while back, and I sold it just because I wasn't really interested in it, but I figured, ah, uh, limited edition Blu-ray, why not? I think it's BDR, but then we have this movie, uh, Delivery Boys, it's a Scorpion release. Uh, just a cheesy, like, breakdancing, um, what years are from 1985, just like a cheesy, you know, subgenre, what's that, like, break-in, stuff like that, just like comedy meets like ice roller skating and that sort of thing so uh, uh uh jeff nelson from scream factory uh said that it was the worst movie one of the worst movies of this genre he'd ever seen and they're all this genre is kind of known for being like you know cheesy but um i wanted to get it you know check it out if i'm in a fun little goofy mood or whatever check it out this next one i'm stoked for red letter day it's new from dread central they put out some really good stuff this year um, a lot of good stuff. Harpoon was amazing. Uh, and then they have a movie called, um, God, it's coming out soon. It's about like, a <clears throat> apocalypse, I, I forget what it's called, but it's about a robot that goes AWOL and starts killing people because it, something happens to it, but I don't know. They just put out some good stuff recently. Red Letter Day, uh, I believe it's some sort of slasher. While adjusting to a new life in a quiet suburban community, a recently divorced mother and her two teens receive mysterious red letters instructing them to kill each other or be killed. So maybe a little bit of Belko experiment. I don't know. Sounded good. Uh, then we have this one. I've heard this movie's great. Uh, it's from the director of The Mind's Eye, which I actually liked. But I actually really liked... Uh, he also did... Um, sci-fi movie uh mind's eye is kind of sci-fi too but um almost human it was called uh there's a few movies with that title but this one's from a few years ago probably like 2008 or 9 maybe uh, maybe even later but it was really good i uh, really liked it so i've liked everything this director's put out and apparently this movie's really good as well uh some sort of hallucinogenic um uh drug-fueled murder uh, in uh, 
Los Angeles. So, uh, yeah, it's crazy. This artwork really reminds me of Mandy. When I first saw this, I was like, wow, what is this, a Mandy ripoff? But all things considered, I've heard that it's actually quite good. It says, a brilliant painter facing the worst creative block of her life turns to anything she can she can to complete her masterpiece, spiraling into a hallucinatory hellscape of drugs, sex, and murder in this sleazy underbelly in the sleazy underbelly of Los Angeles. So I heard that was really good, so I'm excited for that one. This one, uh, shout out Tara for Tom. Uh, I love watching his channel. He always gets movies. Uh, like I've said before, just when I think I picked up everything uh, that I was could possibly be interested in, I watch a Tara for Tom update, and there's like 15 titles. Uh, that I don't have and that I want, that I'm totally interested in. So I always look to him. Uh, he's one of the few YouTubers these days that I actually consistently watch to gain um, just insight, I guess, on movies that I've never heard of before. So not that I know it all or anything. He's just good. Yeah, he he, he buys a lot, and um, I you know I like his taste. So bus party to hell sounds crazy, awesome. This was a UK import, I think. Maybe not. Uh, I think it's actually Region A. It's uh, Gravitas, Venturas. They're kind of hit or miss. But sounded good. Um, Tara reads in this as well. So kind of just like a... Um, well, it says, A party bus on its way to a burning man... To burning man breaks down in the desert in the middle of a satanic cult and all hell breaks loose. A massacre leaves seven survivors fighting for their lives. Looks like some sort of demonic craziness ensues on a bus. That's awesome. Then we have another one from Terra for Tom, uh, recommendation, Fire Maidens from Outer Space, never seen this movie before, it is uh, from 1956, six. it's actually in color, uh, and it's an Olive Films release, so that's awesome, kind of like a noir uh, sci-fi type movie, I think maybe more sci-fi than noir, but cool. Then we have this one, uh, Return to Return to Nukem High, not a big fan of this series, to be perfectly honest, I like the first film, but it's really crazy, and it's really sloppy. It's kind of, some say trauma at its finest, but it's not my favorite trauma film. I, I like Toxic Avenger much better. Uh, I like a lot of trauma stuff much better. But anyways, I the first film is great. I've heard mixed things, but I wanted to grab it because I do have the rest of them. So we'll get around to that. I think that's the most recent one. Uh, Hayride, I love this movie. Again, uh, Terror for Tom. Thanks to him, I know this exists on Blu-ray. I did not know that. I had the DVD, and I had the second film as well. I like it. It's a good slasher movie. Modern slasher. Uh, it's just good. Fun. Um, it says, A New Breed of Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, it's similar. It's got that same, like, uh, rural vibe to it, which is awesome. Anything that has to do with, like, serial killers in a isolated des or isolated place, farmland, uh, pumpkins, scarecrows, hay, all that stuff I love. So, it's a good film. Uh, all right. The Attic. This one, I don't really know much about, but I like Mary Lambert, director of uh, Pet Cemetery. Uh, not to be confused with... Uh, there's a UK movie called the, with the same title, and it's different. Uh, this one is about a woman and her family moving into a remote Victorian mansion, uh, and the girl, Emma, uh, starts having ghastly visions of a girl who appears to be her doppelganger. Uh, since no one else has this entity or sees the entity, Emma is faced with two terrifying prospects. She's either going insane or she's actually being haunted by a malevolent spirit. Sounds good to me. Love it. But I don't know um, why this was so expensive. It's from uh, Dark Side Releasing. They put out some good indie stuff recently uh, that I've showed off in some more uh, other videos. Um, but this is a re-release and this movie's been out for a few years. Uh, and I don't know why it was twenty seven ninety nine. It's ridiculous, but they're out of uh, Dark Side's out of Canada, I believe. All right, um, get into a little uh, randomness here with Scorpion releasing. We have two titles um, that I've never heard of before: Hotel Colonial. Uh, a young Italian American living in New York hears that his older brother, uh, played by Robert Duvall. An infamous terrorist committed suicide in South America after fleeing Italy. He flees to Colombia to identify and bring his brother's body home. Instead of finding him, he's led into a hellish nightmare of violence and disillusionment in this gripping thriller. Also starring Rachel Ward and Massimo Troisi. So, it sounds cool. Uh, and then they put out, as well, Opposing Force. Uh, another 80s, looks like some sort of, like, uh, war film. Um... 1986, Orion Pictures. So I love Orion. Uh, they put out some good stuff. So yeah, probably like a low budget prisoner, uh, 
uh, war flick. So cool. Um, and then they put out this one I was really excited about. Mom. Um, reminds me of Rabid Grannies a lot. Basically, this grandmother is resurrected and she's a flesh eating or sh something happens. Um, she's bitten by a flesh eater and then she comes back with a knack, with a hunger for human flesh. Uh, so that sounds really fun. Can't wait to check that one out. Uh, the movie's from 1990. Awesome. Then we have one that I picked up recently from uh, Diabolic DVD, Bat Pussy. Um, another kind of like a sex, I don't know if it's a porno, but it's definitely sex exploitation. Um, yeah. Uh, it says, Dirty Motherfuckers Fucking in My Holy Gotham City. <laughs> That's awesome. Bat Pussy 1977. Citizens of Gotham City are under attack by smut filmmakers, and only one hero can help. Bat Pussy, played by Dora Dildo, hangs out in her secret headquarters when her twat begins to twitch, warning her of criminal imminent crime. Bat Pussy hops on her holy warning, I'm sorry, on her holy hippity hop to fail that grotesque sex, sex schemes of unhappy married couple considered to be the first porn parody bat pussy is a no-fi sexploitation masterpiece masterpiece of your wildest i should say of your wettest dreams um anyways uh also your most horrifying nightmares this unidentified lunatic filmmakers the unidentified lunatic filmmakers have never been located, providing further, further proof that this movie was likely made by extraterrestrials. So that must be some sort of marketing scheme. Uh, but it sounds good. I've been looking at it for a while, and I kind of uh, needed to grab one thing because I double-ordered something, and Jesse's super cool and always lets me switch up my orders last fucking minute. And uh, so I grabbed that. All right, uh, let's see. We got John Wick 3. Never saw this one. I saw the first two. Not the biggest John Wick fan, but I did enjoy the first one. Uh, quite a bit. Second one was okay. So, whatever. Figured why not. Grab it. Um, then this one I'm excited about. Cut. Uh, never seen this movie before, but it's supposedly a pretty good slasher. Um, you know, in the, in the, in the vein of Chainsaw Massacre, uh, mutant killer type stuff. Uh, 1985, the cast and crew of a horror flick, Hot Blooded, are learning firsthand what it means to be stalked by a masked killer. Uh, that's awesome. So, yeah, I've seen, you know, there's a lot of movies like this um, where the, you're actually in the movie, that type of thing. It's like uh, behind the mask style stuff. And uh, uh, there's another movie that I'm thinking of, but sounds good. So cool. Um, God, what's that movie? It came out a few years ago. Blood something. Uh, it's, it was really good. Indie slasher. Doesn't matter. All right. Uh, then we have Hell House LLC 2, The Abandoned Hotel. Actually, really stoked for this one. I loved the first movie. I thought it was really, really good, really creepy, uh, found footage. Just they built up the whole story so good. Like I just loved it. I thought the clowns were creepy. I thought the gags were creepy. The setting was great. I just loved it. So this one I heard isn't quite as good, but I'm excited to check it out. Still haven't seen it yet, but had it for a few weeks now. The Abaddon Hotel, not the abandoned. The Abaddon. So I know they put out a third one too, which I heard is just. Not as good either, but oh well, what are you going to do? Then we have a couple Scream Factory titles. We have Ambition, It Can Kill You, don't know anything about this, uh, but it is from Robert Shea, director of, uh, producer of A Nightmare on Elm Street, deviously engrossing thriller that will keep you guessing and squirming till the final frame. Jude is an intense, driven musician preparing for the biggest performance of her life, but in her competitive world, her ambition could end up literally killing her. As her competitors begin to die in bizarre ways, she recognizes a fright frightening pattern. Is she next? The more she her suspicions are confirmed, the further she's hurled into a climactic uh, showdown that challenges her chances for survival and sanity. Inspired by thrillers such as Carrie and Black Swan, ambition pulls you into a realm where desire and revenge converge into a questionable reality. Lynn Shea makes an appearance in this film as well. Uh, there are zero quotes on this one, but that's all right. Uh, it's a new one from Scream, so that's cool. Not IFC, just Scream. And then I'm really, hey, Pipsy, and, uh, how am I, pretty girl? How are you? You come to say hello to your dad? Pipsy. Prophecy. I love this movie so much. If you haven't seen it, go out and buy it now. It's really good. Um, 1979. Uh, John Frankenheimer, I forget what else he did, but he's done some good stuff. Uh, it's just a really good practical effects, creature feature, great setting, great cast, 
Um, it's just uh, the effects in this movie are awesome, um, and it's just kind of a good subgenre of horror. It's not like sci-fi. It's more as a creature feature, basically, uh, with really good practical effects and a great setting. So I would check it out. Definitely kind of highly obscure and unseen. Slept on, I guess, underrated, you could say. But I'm really happy that it has a Blu-ray. Because I've been watching my DVD for a few years now. Um, and this is from 1979. So check it out. Highly recommend that one. Hi, Pips in Paprika. You're hungry? Daddy, we'll see you soon. Then we have Dracula. Uh, this is from, um, wow, D Donald Pleasance is, in, Pleasance is in this, awesome. Uh, this is the 1979 Dracula, uh, starring, of course, um, Frank Langella, uh, so he plays Dracula, and Collector's Edition, uh, two disc set, 1991 Director's Edition, and the 1979 Theatrical Edition, um, so, yeah, just another good Dracula tale i guess uh can't say i really remember this one there's so many uh dan curtis frank langella christopher lee you know uh bella lugosi there's just so many but uh i gotta revisit this one so awesome stoked on that then we have uh really kind of cool i actually whipped out um a couple things to show you guys terror train this is from 88 films this is region b locked uh and according to the back of this uh remastered by 88 films with extensive restoration to remove dust and sparkle so this is a new transfer from exclusively from and made for this release so that's super cool and then i whipped out the new uh scorpion release to compare and contrast because this movie has been released now three times we have the original scream factory release um then we have this new scorpion release which is a brand new 2K scan, scan, ugh, 2K scan of the film. And then we have this, which is apparently a new scan of the film as well. Uh, but as far as special features go, looks like they all have kind of their own stuff. Uh, like on the Scorpion release, we have a brand new interview with director Roger Spottiswood. Uh, brand new on-camera interview with writer Judith Roscoe, interview with production executive Don Carmody, producer Daniel, lots of good interviews on this. And then on this one you have, uh, let's see, audio commentaries, all aboard an interview with production designer Glenn Bidwell, which I don't, is maybe exclusive to this, De Destination Death with producer Daniel Grodnick, murder music with composer, riding the rails with production executive Don Carmody. So, so uh, there are some, and then you get reversible sleeve and the newly commissioned cover artwork. So, I can't really tell you which one to get. If you're in the UK, I'm sure this is great. It's got a nice new transfer. This transfer is, good, I'm sure, good, too, from Scorpion. If you're in the US, you got a lot of interviews on this one. Uh, so more interviews, I think, on this one. And then more, like, um, I don't know. I guess you could say they're just different interviews on both. But um, cool. I mean, together, if you're a big fan of this movie like I am, you might want to have them all. I love Terror Train. It's just a great 80s slasher, so I had to have it <clears throat> three times. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Now we are winding down, so let's get into this one real quick from Germany. Didn't really need this, Murders in the Room Org, but um, really nice release, two-disc set. Uh, I think two cuts of the film, um, as well as a soundtrack, maybe. I'm not sure. Uh, Scream Factory just released this movie as well, but, you know, Ed, Edgar Allan Poe's Murders in the Room Org. Murders in the Room Org. Uh, classic film. Yeah, there is an audio CD in this in this one as well. So, really nice set. I'm not going to take it out for time purposes, but two discs, clear case, booklet, CD, uh, reversible cover artwork with the title in English, which is awesome. I think that's the future of the German boutique f uh, release or special release. They should always have... Uh, the English option because so many, uh, so much of their audiences or their their um, um, customer base is in America. So really cool, nice release. Uh, then we have this beautiful freaking box set from Scream Factory, Abbott on, and Costello, all 28 films together in one high definition box set. Um, looks like we have 
the complete Universal Pictures Collection 40 through 43, uh, then we have 44 through 49, and then we have 50 through 55. So it's all the films, including, of course, um, the classic Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein. Uh, this collection is filled with some of the most hilarious routines of all time, including Who's On First, loaded with hours of bonus features and an exclusive collective booklet. This is an ultimate tribute to two of the funniest and most enduring comedians of all time. i got to watch this a little bit more. I'm not really well-versed, or I don't know much about Abbott and Costello, to be perfectly honest. Again, that probably doesn't surprise anybody, but uh, I bought this with the intent of getting into it more and uh, I think a great way to start for me would be uh, watching Abbott and Costello meet Frankenstein uh, but yeah really nice release nonetheless you get a nice little booklet here uh, thick um, and then you know three thick blu-ray cases in a relatively hard box too so it's not like a cheap flimsy box so that's really nice I could do an update on that alone uh, but all right, for time's sake, I'm going to wrap this up pretty soon here. I got five, um, five media books. First up, we have Memoirs of an Invisible Man, John Carpenter film. Just a really nice release. Uh, it's wrapped in this uh, saran wrap, so I'm not going to, or you know what I mean, condom. Uh, so I'm not going to whip it out right now, but uh, good movie. It has, I think, a uh, Scream Shout Factory, Shout Select release as well, I think. It definitely has a U.S. Blu-ray as well, but uh, just a nice media book. Love the cover artwork. Good film. Not one of my favorite Carpenter movies, but still Chevy Chase, so can't go wrong there. Then we have Terrifier, The Beginning. Beautiful. This was limited to 333. I believe they're all sold out already. I got number 325. Uh, love this movie. This is actually All, ha all Hallows' Eve, so now I have the Terrifier media books uh, for the original. And... Uh, Terrifier, the second film. I believe this is just the beginning, which is also All Hallows' Eve, also known as All Hallows' Eve, uh, which is an anthology film of sorts, but it's Art, Art the Clown is kind of a recurring theme, obviously, and there's some really, really, really good graphic gore scenes in this. Uh, one in a gas station that involves, like, intestines, we'll just say. Just some really gory, fucked up shit. I mean, if you want to see the origins of Art the Clown, I, I highly recommend this movie. I think it's really good. Uh, I dig it. All right, then we have this one. I've never seen this. This is uh, Bound in Blood, uh, Orphan Killer 2. I'm not the biggest fan of Orphan Killer. It's okay. Um, it's just kind of gore for gore's sake, I feel like. But it's got uh, Marcus Cuck, I think, does the practical effects in it. Um, and he's awesome for indie stuff, really gory shit. Uh, I think it's Marcus Cook. Um, but... Um, Number 597, so this is limited. This is all region. Uh, the Return of Marcus Miller. Maybe that's what I was thinking. That's the character of the orphan killer. But, uh, yeah. Religious undertones, which I kind of... Kind of creep me out, to be honest. Uh, but it's just a gory, nasty, brutal uh, slasher movie about this badass psychopath, basically. It's very gory, very brutal. So I haven't heard anything about the second film. I know the first film has a kind of a cult following. It's okay. I mean, it's not a bad film. It's just brutal. So if you like the brutal stuff, definitely check it out. Uh, then we have this one. Shout out to Chucky Gore. My man Chucky once again coming through with the awesomeness. Uh, we have Night of the Hunted. This is the Jean Roland collection number eight. I do collect these from Wicked Vision, so really nice release. That reminds me. I have some Wicked Vision stuff that I pre-ordered a while ago that I still haven't received. i got to check into that. It probably hasn't been released yet, but... Um, but anyways, I, yeah, I have all of these. They're really nice. Um, and this one took a while. We had pre-ordered this a while ago, like a year almost, and now it's finally here. So that's rad. Thank you, Chucky. Then we have, uh, two beautiful media book, padded media books, uh, from Germany, from 84 Entertainment, one of my favorite German releasing companies. Uh, classics. Need I say anything more about these? These are staying sealed. They're for collector purposes, and they are amazing releases. Look at that cover artwork. Nice thick padded media books gorgeousness awesome and last but certainly not least we have oh boy a big guy here we got a big one so this is the basket case from platinum cult edition uh i guess people have been waiting for years pre-ordered this i hopped on it a couple months ago and it arrived so i can't really say i'm a part of that but i'm a big fan of the first basket case film uh, so I had to jump on this. 
I will say it's nice. I mean, this is nice. I do like uh, Nameless, uh, and I want to get more of the Nameless busts. I think they're a little, slightly better quality. But this is still really nice. There's nothing wrong with this. Um, I always forget the dude's name, but basically, if you're familiar with the movie, you know. This guy right here is a parasitic twin, a mutant parasitic twin uh, that is severed from his brother slash, I guess, twin brother. Um, and he is kept in this basket here, which is really high quality. And he likes to escape from the basket and murder hookers and any old New York City street peeps, I guess. That sort of thing. It's great. It's fun 80s, uh, great scenery. Um, it's just, you know, a classic movie. It's very much like Maniac in the sense that you get really nice shots and a really good feel for the grittiness of New York City in the 80s. Uh, so it's awesome. Special movie, for sure. And, uh, yeah, uh, probably, I don't know, I love this director, actually. Hen and Lauders, I love Brain Damage. That's a really great film. Uh, Frankie and Hooker's good, but Basket Case and, and Brain Damage are my two favorites. So, um, this actually comes with, if I can get it out... The trilogy, which I do own like multiple times over already uh, in all different forms, but comes with a trilogy. Really nice. Uh, I got number 463. So I think there were 350 of these busts made and then 500 of these uh, special editions made. So it's pricey. I think it's still available right now on Amazon.co.uk or Amazon Germany.de. Uh, Amazon.de, but it's like over 100 bucks. So if you want to drop the money on it, Get it while it's hot because there's only 150 of them. It is really, really uh, nice detail and everything. It's heavy too. But yeah, it's a great film. Um, you get all three too. So really nice. I'm not going to do a tour of this release. But if you want to check out a video, um, I just subscribed to this dude. Uh, Phil's Creepy Videos, I think it is. So shout out to Phil. He does a thorough little um, unboxing and, and discussion of what is in this release. So go check him out. If you're interested in learning more about the release, but yeah, pretty awesome. Love it. So that's that. All right, guys, thanks for watching this update, and I will catch you very soon with another one. Peace out. Yo, peeps, T Money back in the dungeon. Had to do one more thing. I forgot a pile of movies that was in front of me. So let's get to it, shall we? Let's finish this up right now. So, um, The Far Country, Arrow Video, new Arrow Films, uh, sorry, Arrow Academy release. A Western movie from 1954. Um, don't know much about it, but got to grab it. Had to grab it. Nice slip cover, reversible cover artwork. Two discs. You get uh, disc one, a bunch of extra features, special features, and then disc two is a full 1080 presentation of the film. Then we have Jake Speed from 2002, I believe. Uh, kind of like an action movie. A girl's kidnapped, and then the hero, Jake Speed, comes to save the day. Um, so that's cool. Then we have The Dead Center. I'm really excited to check this movie out as well. It's a newer supernatural thriller um, about a dude who's resurrected, I guess, and some doctors doing a study on him. And it's just craziness. I've heard really good things about this movie, so that was a bad, bad description. But check it out. I've heard it's really good. I haven't seen it yet, but excited to check it out. It actually took forever. I ordered this from um, Arrow Video, and it got lost in the mail. It took like a month to get here. Over a month. Finally came, though. And last but certainly not least, or I don't really know, I've never seen this movie, we have Slaughterhouse-Five. Um, I know it's based on the novel Slaughterhouse-Five, and it's a sci-fi, futuristic, time travel uh, study of a man. Um, and I don't know much else about it, but not really, really my forte or my, uh, you know subgenre i guess of film but uh, apparently it's it's good so we'll see uh slaughterhouse five uh brand new 4k restoration of the film and uh it takes place in upstate new york 1968 um so yeah all right that's it thanks guys one more thing i lied one more thing I promise this is the last thing i'll show you can you tell i'm ready to get out of here it's almost one in the morning it's time to go to bed or watch a movie and go to bed robocop yes Finally, should have waited. I was actually kind of debating to hold off on this one because I have one other thing coming. Uh, but we'll just show that when it gets here. Love this movie. Who doesn't love RoboCop? I mean, come on. It's great. For me, RoboCop, well, no. Terminator and RoboCop were both a key part of growing up. I mean, I just remember watching these movies at my neighbor's house. 
Uh, their mom loved horror and loved just good 80s gritty action movies. So, I mean, RoboCop, classic, beautiful release. I mean, do we need this? Not really. Do I need this? Not really. Uh, Screen Factory put out a really nice release, I think, right? They did RoboCop. I know they did two and three. Did they do the first one? I don't even remember right now. But this movie's awesome. Everybody's seen RoboCop. So if you want a really, really, really nice release, I would go with this one. Uh, it's uh, disc one, director's cut, disc two, theatrical cut, and tons of special features in between. Comes with a booklet, poster artwork, reversible cover, two discs, I believe. Uh, I just said that. But yeah, really nice booklet, as always. I'm sure somebody showed this off. I am going to go because I am like exhausted now. But really, really nice. Uh, if you're a fan of this movie, get this. This is probably the nicest release the movie will ever have. And as far as the film goes, it's a 4K restoration. So that's awesome. Uh, love this movie. So tons of really cool features, too. I just saw something about Rob Boutine in an interview from 1987. Um, that's uh, that's awesome. Uh, sorry, Bob, Rob, yeah, Boutine. Uh, so that's, that's great. Chock full. You want to see? There you go. Amazing. Such a nice release. These Aero Special Editions are the bomb. Digs. Thanks for watching, guys. I bid you farewell for good on this evening. Love you guys. Peace.